Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, Revoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour One. Hello, America. Greetings. It's Eric Erickson here nationwide. Glad to have you with me today. The phone number, 877-973-7425. If you want to be on the program, we got a lot to talk about, and it's like Groundhog Day. They're doing it all over again. The House has just convened. We'll see whether or not they adjourn. If Kevin McCarthy adjourns, it's probably a sign of real weakness that he hasn't been able overnight to get votes in his direction. Let's step back for a moment on the Kevin McCarthy situation and uh, look at an angle that that hasn't uh, come up. Um, Here's the thing. There's a lot of commentary overnight on television yesterday and in the run-up to this vote that the 19 to 20... Republican members of Congress who are opposing Kevin McCarthy, that it is about ego, it's about hubris, it's about grandstanding, it's about stunts, that they're clowns, they're terrorists, they're the Taliban. We've been through this all before. If you remember back in 2012, Barack Obama referred to uh, these conservatives in Congress as the ones who wanted to shoot the hostages and they were able to get sequestration. The very same voices on the right aligned with Kevin McCarthy were aligned with the, aligned against these conservatives in 2012 when they were able to get sequestration. The first time Congress passed legislation for real-world, real-time cuts in spending, not future cuts in growth, but actual cuts in spending. They went through the same attacks, the same accusations, the same comparisons to the Taliban and terrorists at the time, and they won then. There's a larger issue here, though, that I want to focus on. We are told the country is polarized. I'm a little bit disappointed with Fox News and with CNN in their coverage of this. They've been out attacking these conservatives for failing to get in line. Why should they get in line? The same networks highlight America as divided between left and right, a deeply polarized 50-50 nation. What this split in Congress should show you is that it's actually multifaceted. It's actually deeper than that. And there is really no one on television, on Fox News or on CNN, really willing to cover the conservative side of this. They cover the party side of this. They cover the Republicans. They cover the Democrats. They don't really cover the nuances of the progressives or the nuances of the conservatives. They they make it as binary as possible at a time where, for example, most of the people at CNN reject the idea of the gender binary. They have wholly embraced the partisan binary as the be-all, end-all of coverage of the media when it's actually more multifaceted than the gender binary. You have a group of Republicans who are conservatives. Back when John Boehner stepped aside, there were three Republicans who advertised themselves as the young guns. And they were giving out awards and finding new young leaders, young guns to come to Congress. They were Eric Cantor, Paul Ryan, and Kevin McCarthy. When John Boehner left, those conservatives decided to go with Paul Ryan instead of Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy was the guy who was supposed to be speaker after John Boehner, and the conservatives rejected him then. Seven years later, they are rejecting him again. Why? Because as much as they might not have cared for Paul Ryan, at the end of the day, they understood he was ideologically still on the conservative side, not as far conservative as they were, not as far conservative as I am, but on a left-right divide, he was on the right side. 
Kevin McCarthy can't be placed because he is principleless. He is rudderless. He sticks his finger in the wind. So these conservatives have decided there's no way. They're done. They're, they're not going to allow Kevin McCarthy to be speaker. At least with even a moderate person with a modicum of principle, they will know where that person stands on issues and therefore can negotiate with that person. With Kevin McCarthy, everything is too transactional. What is also notable here is that this very much feels like moving on from Donald Trump. There's a uh, crazy political activist in Georgia. Someone tipped me off last night. She's out telling everybody, stand with Kevin McCarthy. This is someone who uh, refused to vote for Brian Kemp because Donald Trump uh, opposed Brian Kemp in Georgia. Therefore, she opposed Brian Kemp in Georgia and um, didn't want Herschel Walker as the nominee until Trump said Herschel Walker and got on board. Uh, blows in the wind, is led by Donald Trump. Donald Trump has come out again overnight and said, stand with Kevin McCarthy. I, I'm not sure who is advising him, shortcut, it is him, to jump on board a sinking ship. But I really want you to notice what is being left on the cutting room floor, what is not being talked about in the media, is that this is a more complicated issue it is a more multifaceted issue. It is an issue of division, an issue of uh, actual partisan ideology, and it is also an issue of Kevin McCarthy repeatedly selling out the conservatives in favor of the Democrats. If you go back and look at the big spending bills, this is one reason they rejected him after John Boehner is because Kevin McCarthy was in charge of lining up the votes for the big spending bills. And in lining up the votes for the big spending bills, he relied on the Democrats to get them passed instead of dealing with the conservatives and the conservative desires. Only when conservatives fought on sequestration, and by the way, they were attacked in exactly the same way McCarthy's team is attacking them now. Narcissists, uh, haters, obstructionists, the chaos candidates, the Taliban, the terrorists, all the invective was hurled at them then by Republicans. And they held their ground and they got the first meaningful cuts in government in a generation. So here, the House of Representatives convenes today. Kevin McCarthy does not have the votes. The House Freedom Caucus has 20 members holding strong. And so today it's on the Republicans. Yesterday it was all about, uh, we got to let the process move. We need a speaker. We've got to get going. If they want that, they've got to oust Kevin McCarthy. They've got to have McCarthy stand down. But there's something else you should note here. Do you notice how we're always careening from crisis to crisis? We've got a, a debt ceiling increase. Oh my gosh, now the government's going to set down unless we pass a continuing resolution. Oh my gosh, now we got the debt ceiling. Oh my gosh, now we got the continuing resolution. Here's what happens, and this is part of the pioneering of Kevin McCarthy. This is one of the things the conservatives are bristling about. You know, this is a new phenomenon. Go back just 15 years ago, we weren't careening from crisis to crisis like this. Why? Because the leadership decided that it could wait until the crisis was upon us and the leadership itself could draft legislation, rush it to the floor of the House, sight unseen, and force a vote to stop the crisis. There will be a crisis. There will be a crisis. There must, there, there must and will be a crisis. And if there is not a crisis... There would be no legislation. And one of the things that these conservatives are fighting against is the fact that there's just crisis after crisis after crisis. No one's allowed to be a legislator anymore. No one's allowed to come to the floor and make amendments. No one's allowed to draft legislation and have it go before put in the hopper, be referred to committee, have the committees work on it and come back. Everything is leadership driven now. And as they are leadership driven now, as they come to the floor based on leadership and the rules committee marks them up and precludes debate, uh, the leadership takes a top down one size fits all approach. You either like it or you're going to cause the government shutdown or you're going to cause us to default on debt. And these conservatives are saying, let's open the process up again. We used to do this up until about 15 years ago. 
when John Boehner, Denny Hastert, Kevin McCarthy and the like, they decided to do this up until then, we had a process where the Democrats could actually make amendments and Republicans could make amendments and neither side got exactly what they wanted. And the conservatives are saying, we understand this may to some degree work against us, but it works better for us in that we're not blowing the caps, rushing through sight unseen, massive legislation to grow the government. We don't even appropriate it anymore. We don't pass budgets anymore. We wait for the crisis to be upon us and we pass a continuing resolution and say, if you don't pass this today, the government will shut down. They're tired of crisis government. The conservatives are tired of crisis government. Crisis government emboldens the lobbyists and K Street emboldens the leadership and degrades the value of the individual members of Congress who were sent to Washington to represent the interests of their people. That's what this fight is about. Kevin McCarthy pioneered crisis government. Kevin McCarthy, if he wants a Speaker of the House, he could sit down today. And in sitting down today, they would find a Speaker of the House. Yesterday, it was all about the egos of these 20 conservatives. Today, it's about the egos of Kevin McCarthy and his friends. They can be only Kevin. And if they are only Kevin, we will go through a series of votes in the House of Representatives. Uh, once a Speaker of the House has been rejected by one vote, historically, it's taken at least nine votes. Do they want to do that? Do they want to set a new record? Do they want to go to four or five votes? McCarthy doesn't have the votes. The only way McCarthy has the votes is for the Democrats to walk out. And if the Democrats walk out, they hand Kevin McCarthy the Speaker's chair, and he becomes the Democrats' Speaker, not the Republicans' Speaker. So what are you going to do, Republicans? If you elect Kevin McCarthy speaker, you're going to continue crisis politics. Aren't y'all tired? Just you, you listening right now. Aren't you tired of a Congress that waits until the crisis is here and says, here's this multi-thousand page appropriations measure, pass it today. Don't read it. You don't have time to read it. Pass it so that we can keep the government funded. Aren't you tired of getting to the point where the debt ceiling has to be increased another $10 trillion beyond our gross domestic product. They wait until the last minute. The debt ceiling is here. The Treasury is on the verge of defaulting. They say, you must do this today. Don't read it. You don't have time. It's too big anyway. You can't read it all in one sitting. You must pass it and raise the debt ceiling. Aren't you tired of that? Aren't you tired of crisis government? That's the way Kevin McCarthy wants to operate, crisis government. And there are 20 responsible conservatives saying no. This is not about a polarized America. This is about multifaceted complaints about the process in Congress. And for all the people saying, oh, this is so embarrassing, they can't elect a speaker. So, so do any of you really care? Was your life overnight? Did you live in existential terror and fear that there was no speaker of the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C.? Did you crumble in terror that there was no speaker? Do you really care? Of course you don't. No one does. This is the process. The process is messy. The process is fine. And yes, in a democracy, on occasion, this small minority actually gets to hold hostage the entire chamber. Why? Because the votes aren't there. Kevin McCarthy's had two months to get the votes. This isn't on them. This isn't about them. This is about Kevin McCarthy. He could have gotten the votes. He could have sat down with each of them. He could have heard their concerns. He could have hammered out a crisis or a compromise. Instead, Kevin McCarthy always governs by the crisis. So he waited until the last moment and he expected them to cave. It's what he's done on the budget. It's what he's done on the debt ceiling. He thought it would work this time and there's showing him, no, you can't keep waiting until the last possible moment. Kevin McCarthy went to the floor of the House yesterday and thought he had the votes to become Speaker of the House because Kevin McCarthy presides through crisis. And he thought when the crisis was upon them, they would cave. They're not caving. And that's part of the problem here. These conservatives are tired of having to cave at the last minute and grow government because Kevin McCarthy dragged his feet until he could get to a crisis and bully, cajole, and demand. They're 
not going to be bullied. They're not going to be cajoled. They want someone else to be speaker. If the Republicans want a speaker of the House of Representatives, they can have one by sunset today if they get rid of Kevin McCarthy. The weather outside might be frightful, but in your bed, you've got super soft bowl and branch sheets to sleep under. They'll keep you comfortable. They're just the perfect weight. Summer, winter, fall, spring, the perfect weight, and they get softer every wash. And right now, with the weather so cold outside, you want to just be snuggled up inside. They're the perfect sheets under which you and your loved one can snuggle. And right now, you can get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use promo code ERIC at BowlinBranch.com. That's BowlinBranch, B-O-L-L. A-N-D-Branch.com. The promo code is Eric, E-R-I-C-K. Bull and Branch sheets are the perfect 100% organic cotton threads that get softer every wash. Not only do they get softer every wash, but they, the drape across your body is just perfect. I really enjoy mine. We've got them now on multiple beds in the house. We've just kept buying them because they're so soft. And every wash, they get softer. And right now, get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, at BolandBranch.com. That's BolandBranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. The promo code ERIC. I want to go now to the floor of the United States House of Representatives happening live. This is my dear friend Chip Roy talking, uh, making his, his nomination. To advancing the cause for his family and for this country. And it is, he has done it admirably. But there's an important reason for nominating Byron. And that is this country needs a change. This country needs leadership that does not reflect this city, this town that is badly broken. The House of Representatives is the people's house. It represents the entirety of our country and we each represent some 750,000 people. And we come here and it, here we sit in a room filled with those representatives. And my friend, Mr. Gallagher, and he is my friend, and I agree with him on many things, and I agree with almost everything that you were talking about. But we should be in here having this kind of a conversation with this many people in the room about Ukraine. And we should debate the merits, and we should debate the ups and downs of being involved. We should debate the $45 billion. We should debate whether it should be more or less. We should debate whether it should be paid for. We should debate what the result we should demand. The only way you're going to get that is, is if you change the rules and have the leadership to advance the rules to make sure that we can do that. Now, we've had a conversation for two months to try to advance the ball, and we have had success in doing that. But we're not there. We're not at the place where we need to be to guarantee, to guarantee that we're going to be able to stand up in the face of the swamp that continues to step over the American people on a daily basis and spend money we don't have and to continue to leave our borders open and to continue to fund bureaucrats that are stepping over the freedoms of the American people. Byron will stand up and do that. By Byron has a track record of doing that. And importantly, when we're sitting here today and we continue this debate and we then have a vote, I just ask my friends on this side of the aisle, do you think that the American people support the status quo? Yes or no? Do you think that the American people want us to continue down the road of what we've been doing? Do they want us to continue to do the things since the leadership that's currently in place have been in place, do you think they want us to continue down that path? And the argument that I would make is that they want a new face, new vision, new leadership, and I believe that face, vision, and new leadership is Byron Donalds, and I'm proud to put his name into nomination, and I yield back. That's Congressman Chip Roy, Texas, longtime friend of mine, and he is nominating Byron Donalds of Florida to be the Speaker of the House. And his point gets you to what I've been telling you, that the real divide here is management by crisis. 
they're fed up, the conservatives are, with management by crisis, and it's something that Kevin McCarthy was instrumental in pioneering in Washington, D.C. Wait until you get to the government shutdown. Wait until you get to the debt ceiling and then force through a massive appropriations measure that is so many thousands of pages, it can't be fully digested by the individual members of Congress, so they can't do their job. They can't offer amendments. It's all top-down. And Congressman Roy, a staunch conservative from Texas, has had enough of that. And so he's willing to stand up and put up uh, Byron uh, Donalds, congressman from Florida, who would become the first black speaker of the House of Representatives were he to get the nomination and become the speaker. Uh, The conservatives are not going to stand down on this, and the Democrats aren't going to help the Republicans. They're going to have to keep voting until they settle on a speaker. When we come back, Donald Trump has weighed in. We should discuss that. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. We're not even out of the B's yet. We haven't moved on to the C's in the list of reps. And um, (laughs) Kevin McCarthy's already lost again. So on to fifth vote. Um, I mean, they could have a speaker of the House of Representatives this evening. If Kevin McCarthy stands down, it's 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 all on him. Um, so we'll see. Now we got to move on. Um, I, I do need to note that Donald Trump did weigh in on this, and it has uh, perturbed some of his supporters. Former President, this is from Jonathan Allen at NBC. Former President Donald Trump issued a full throated endorsement of House Leader Kevin McCarthy Wednesday morning hours before Republicans plan to return to the floor. In his tweet on True Social, some really good conversations took place last night, and it's now time for all our great Republican House members to vote for Kevin, close the deal, take the victory, Trump wrote. Republicans do not turn a great triumph into a giant and embarrassing defeat. He spoke to lawmakers by phone on Tuesday, according to People, Um, we will see whether or not this matters. What I was told this morning is that when the conservatives met this morning, they were more fired up than ever to oppose Kevin McCarthy. Uh, they're very adamant at this point that it not be him. Uh, the result is that it's probably not going to be him. Uh, right now, there are six, uh, 31 votes for McCarthy, 31 votes for Jeffries, four for Byron Donalds. Uh, there are a lot more votes to go. It doesn't look like McCarthy's going to be able to get across the threshold again unless the um, unless the Democrats walk out. We'll see. Uh, listen, I'm fascinated by the process, and I don't want to bore you guys on this. But this is democracy in action. This is the republic. Uh, We are not a republic where our chamber of the people, the chamber of deputies, some people call it, the House of Commons, some people call it, where they beat the snot out of each other on the floor. You know, this happens. You see the video sometimes in Taiwan and Korea and the like where fistfights break out on the floor of their uh, lower house. This isn't happening in this country. It is a messy process. And honestly, I think we should be fine with that. People always bring up the messy process when they're embarrassed by it and they say it should not be so and people should fall in line. One of the great and unique things about our country and its democracy is the unwillingness of those uh, to fall in line, the unwillingness of people to fall in line, the willingness of people to stand up and speak. And that we should acknowledge the divisions and we should, everyone gets the say, and this is what makes this unique. This is what makes this kind of cool. Yes. I mean, it's deeply frustrating for some. I acknowledge that. But again, no one had lost sleep last night in this country other than Kevin McCarthy and maybe Marjorie Taylor Greene, that Kevin McCarthy wasn't Speaker of the House. Everyone else is perfectly fine. Your life went on. And one of my frustrations with Washington, and and one of the reasons I'm okay with this, is because there is always this sense of existential crisis that builds up in Washington. It's what they do. It's what they've done for so long that your life 
is at stake if Washington descends to dysfunction. Washington's not going to save you. Washington was never going to save you. Washington will not save you today. Washington will not save you tomorrow. Washington will not save you. It's just not going to happen. Seek the welfare of the community in which you live. There you'll find your welfare. Washington, you're not going to find your welfare in Washington unless you live there. And so having a messy process, having a convoluted process, having a chaotic process, the media poo-poos it, the leadership poo-poos it, everybody tut-tuts it. It's not bad to have a chaotic process like this at the beginning to find the speaker. It's not bad at all to be able to do that. It's a good thing, and we should revel in the fact that the United States does this all in public, does this all in the open. We should enjoy the fact that in our country, at a time when so many people are convinced, well, big pharma's in charge, the media's in charge, tech's in charge, the sinister dark hand is in charge, Davos is in charge, the World Economic Forum is in charge, really the United Nations is in charge, it's George Soros in charge, the Illuminati's in charge, no, no. This is the day you get to see you actually are in charge of the process. We have descended as a people to conspiracy crazy town by and large. And in conspiracy crazy town, in a chaotic process, people struggle to understand. They concoct fantasies and conspiracies of who controls things. They, someone's a puppet master. Someone pulls strings. Today, you're pulling the strings. You're members of Congress in a chaotic process, choosing the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And honestly, for those of you who think there is some behind-the-scenes conspiracy, for those of you who think big pharma, the big businesses, the Chamber of Commerce, Davos, the World Economic Forum, some such is in charge, you should relish the opportunity to beat Kevin McCarthy because all the stars have been aligned in his favor and now they're not. And it doesn't look like it's going to work for him. And you should savor that and enjoy that and like that and savor the chaos. This is not chaos for the sake of chaos. And when you listen to the talking heads, that's what they say. It's chaos for the talk for the sake of chaos. It's not. It's not. It's about finding the right speaker. And sometimes that looks messy and we shouldn't tut tut it and turn our nose up at it and poo poo it and say, oh, this is so messy. This is so uncivilized. This is so embarrassing. This is America. Sometimes it doesn't work out exactly the way you think. Sometimes it doesn't work out the way you want. And sometimes chaos gets you there. But it's part of the process that our founders intended. It was way more chaotic even then. So enjoy this. It's historic. Watch it. Savor it. We'll see who the speaker is. To give you a sense of this, though, and, and how I think the media feels, this is Jonah Goldberg, and I like Jonah. Don't want to criticize Jonah. This is Jonah Goldberg on CNN yesterday. This is much more about nihilism and performative disruption in it than anything else. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene is as mag as they come, and she's for Kevin McCarthy. And Lauren Boebert is an equal, a co-equal MAGA, and she's against them. And it's... They're like feuding now, though. They hate each other. It's not nihilism. I, I listen, I this has become the talking point of the day for the social media mob in Washington and New York, that this is somehow nihilism. I, I don't think it is. Here's That was CNN. Now, this is the five on Fox News. You know, it's time to get together as a party and stop embarrassing yourselves in front of the rest of us. How long can this last, Dana? Well, 100 years ago, they went to 113 ballots. Oh, God. So this was the third. Okay. Uh, could be a long night, folks. Just kidding. It could be days. I don't know what's going to happen. I think that because he's not able to p gain any votes on the second, third, maybe even in the fourth ballot at this point, then you have to say that he's already given away a ton right. of things to these this small right. group of holdout. It's like the opposite of the squad. They make the squad look positively reasonable uh, <laughs> in, in this situation. And there, a lot of this is just an ideological thing. It might be a personal thing. Like, I don't like you. Okay, okay, well, you know, remember when Nancy Pelosi, she held open the vote. You had to, there was no proxy voting for speaker. There was no proxy voting for speaker because her numbers were very, very small. But they were able pull, to pull together. Oh, yeah. So you got two networks here, Fox and CNN, both of them criticizing the conservatives, both of them criticizing the conservatives for dragging this out. Why? 
Why? Shouldn't we appreciate that the conservatives aren't being bullied by speakers? Here's Trey Gowdy on Fox News. Uh, look, I, I got bad news for Kevin's opponents. He's got a lot more than 20 friends. So uh, there, there are more than 20 people that are going to say, you know what, we're not ever voting for anyone else. I mean, Brett, you got a guy who's got 200 votes and the next leading vote getter, for very good reasons, doesn't want to be the Speaker of the House. And yet this kamikaze wing within the Republican Party knows better than 85% of the rest of the conference. Um, you know what? They do. The rest of them are kind of go-along to get along people. Here's Chip Roy, congressman from Texas. You heard him earlier. This is him talking about the, the rumor that Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic leader, could become the speaker. Look, I don't believe that, Laura. And look, at the end of the day right now, the conversation we're having is, will we change the rules committee so that we stop doing what we're doing? Like, you're talking about having a Democrat versus a Republican. Explain to me how what we've been doing is working. But Explain that to me. Right, but did, my question is, didn't and I'm not privy to everything, but did did he not put a number of Freedom Caucus members? Didn't he already agree to you guys have specific and, and top positions in the key committees? No, I know, so actually, I know some of them the, aren't sexy, like Ways and Means or Appropriations, no, but no, Rules Committee, yes, correct? No, judiciary, no, this, yes, correct? This is an well, judiciary. Of course, we have Republicans. Jim Jordan's on the judiciary. Like, like, this is the reality, though. Last night, a presentation of an of an offer was put in front of Kevin, and he walked away from it. And guess what? He then went out and said that people were looking to try to pad their own resumes and get on committees. Laura, I don't want to be on the Rules Committee and miss my family on Sunday night, but I offered my name so that I could come up and fight for my country. And then he turns. Around around and goes to the conference meeting this morning and then he lies about us and then he had Mike Rogers stand up and say he was going to kick us off committees. He just burned himself. He just solidified 15 or 20 people who are against him. Some of us have okay. been working for 60 days in good faith to get actual changes to fix this place and we're still I'm here at the Capitol and I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go sit down to try to negotiate. But the negotiation only works when people want to actually advance right. conservative policies and unfortunately we hit a wall last night when Kevin rejected a good faith offer to give him 218 votes. He had it on his table. He turned it away. There you go. McCarthy turned away the offer from the conservatives. They know they're not going to get everything. They have some things they want, and if they can't get them, they don't want Kevin McCarthy. It's really that simple. They have some things they want, including an open legislative process where people on the left, the right, and the center can offer amendments to legislation and have it go through the committee process. And Kevin McCarthy wants to govern by crisis. He wants to build up the crisis and at the crisis then force big votes on big spending. It's why so many of his staff have gone out to K Street to get jobs so that they can shape the packages and the big spending and the funding so that then the crisis can come and McCarthy can say, oh my gosh, the government shuts down tomorrow here. Pass this piece of legislation or else. And Chip Roy and these others are tired of it. I don't like being on the side of Matt Gates. I think he's a bumbling moron. I cannot stand the guy. I, I wish that Florida would find me someone better than him, but he's actually on the right side here. Those of you who don't like Marjorie Taylor Greene and you're tired of this and want to move on, you're on Marjorie Taylor Greene's side. I'm on Chip Roy's side. I'm on the conservative side. Kevin McCarthy shouldn't be Speaker of the House. It's really, I don't think, up for debate at this point. We now have four votes in the United States House of Representatives. He has lost all four of them. You can have a Speaker of the House of Representatives by 5 p.m. today if Kevin McCarthy steps aside. Here's Tucker Carlson, one of the only voices on Fox News willing to stand up against Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy says he is in it for the long haul. And by the way, the record long haul happened back in 1856 when it took 133 ballots over two months to elect a Speaker of the House. And remember, until there's a Speaker, the House cannot do any business. In fact, new members can't even be sworn in. Political analysts say as the ballots go on, some members may start voting present, and each no-show or present vote would lower Kevin McCarthy's threshold. Right now, as you heard, he needs 218 votes. Tucker, he is 16 short going into tomorrow. Wow. Democracy in action. Trace Gallagher, thank you for that. I had no idea that went on for months. Went on for months. Uh, that, that's not the full clip. I, I, I told Charlie to get the wrong one. Tucker pointed out that, uh, you know, McCarthy could step aside and they could have the speaker race taken care of. Um, and that uh, McCarthy is too transactional. Good for Tucker.
It's just, it's kind of sad to me that the major news networks are all out there focused on uh, how bad these conservatives are because little Kevin McCarthy can't get his votes. You know what? The conservatives are saying, they're always in the minority, folks, in Congress, but they're the majority in the heartland. The majority of you listening right now, these people have your back. They understand that governing from crisis to crisis is a bad way to govern this country, and they want reform, and Kevin McCarthy is one of the obstacles to it, which is why he has to go. You should be rooting for these 20 members of Congress. You should be rooting for them to win on this and get rid of Kevin McCarthy because whoever the alternative is, you're not going to get Kevin McCarthy and his governance by crisis. One of the groups out there that's trying to end governance by crisis and reduce government, reduce government spending and reduce the big bills in Congress to make them manageable for members of Congress to be able to read and digest is Americans for Prosperity. They want to train up an army of activists around the countries that support free markets and free people and limited government. You can be a part of it by going to americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. Americans for Prosperity trains people in states, to be state-level activists, to get involved, to show up at your school board, your city council, your county commission, even talk to your state legislators. They teach you how, they provide you the data so you can make the best arguments possible and be the smartest person in the room who knows how to get things done. If that sounds like something you're interested in doing, they've got local chapters all over the country because they're a do tank, not a think tank. They go out into the states and they do the business of advancing the conservative cause, not just trading white papers in Washington. America Americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. Sign up now. Y'all need to keep up with the process and keep up with what's going on by texting the word data to 33777. Click that first link, subscribe to the show notes. Let's see if I can squeeze in a phone call here. Honestly, I've been so wound up on this. I hadn't taken them. Let's go to Tony first. Welcome to the show, Tony. How are you? Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good. I just want your thoughts on the, uh, Joe Biden saying that, uh, talk, speaking on the vote in the House, he says that uh, this is embarrassing. It says the whole world is watching. This is embarrassing to our country. I mean, there's nobody in the United States that's ever embarrassed our country as much as he has in the last two years. Yeah, look, I, I, I don't find this to be an embarrassing process at all just because they're not getting their way. It's not embarrassing. I, I think it's fantastic. The House of Representatives is having to sit there. Like Chip Roy pointed out just a little while ago in his speech, it is really rare these days to have the entirety of the House of Representatives assembled in the room together debating and voting. They don't do that anymore. That's what they should be doing. That's not embarrassing. That's the way the process is supposed to work. The process is not meant to be streamlined. Gridlock is part of the system. Our founders designed it. Gridlock is a feature, not a bug of the system. And for them to say, oh, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's democracy in action. Just like what? Um, two months ago, you people were telling me democracy was going to die. And here it is in action. Representative democracy on the floor of the House of Representatives. And it's working. McCarthy has lost again. 13 votes for Byron Donald, 120 for Hakeem Jeffries, 128 for 129 now for Kevin McCarthy. He just voted for himself. We're not even out of the M's and he's lost again. And we're going to go through the process again. And it's going to happen again. And the question is, do we want to do we want to move on to something else? We should be able to move on to other things, but we can until Kevin McCarthy steps aside. He says he's not going to step aside. He's going to have to step aside because the process will continue to repeat itself. And that's the question. Now, I'm going to move on because there actually is other news we have to talk about. I also want to take your phone calls. I've been wound up on this. I've been focused on this, so I will come back. I'll take your phone calls, 877-973-7425. But also... We've got to talk about something that's happened in Virginia. One of the major school districts in Virginia refused to tell Asian students they had won prestigious awards before they applied to colleges. There is growing evidence, and now there's an attorney general's investigation in Virginia, that in order to help non-Asian students in certain school systems who underperform the Asian students, those Asian students were denied awards until after college applications went out 
uh, and now they're having to scramble and, and amend the awards. And the attorney general and the governor have called for an investigation and are doing it. I've got the details when we come back. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.